Hey garden nerds, we're happy to have a sponsor for this episode. True Leaf Market has been a supplier of exclusively non-GMO seeds since 1974. They offer a wide selection of seeds, many of which are heirloom and organic, for everything from vegetables to flowers, grains to herbs, and specialty seeds. I love their huge selection of seeds and growing supplies for sprouting and microgreens, too. Their seed packets are affordable and are available in sizes for the home gardener all the way up to bulk wholesale. Visit trueleafmarket.com and use our promo code GTOTW5, that's as in Garden Nerd Tip of the Week 5, to get your discount on your order. Now, on with the show. Welcome everyone to the Garden Nerd Tip of the Week podcast, where experts from around the world talk shop, share stories, and offer their favorite tip. I'm your host, Christy Wilhelmi. I met our next guest at the Heirloom Expo in Ventura County, California. Lauren Augusta founded and serves as the executive director of the Multinational Exchange for Sustainable Agriculture, most likely known as MESA. Uh, she's worked in the nonprofit and agriculture sectors since 1985, and she helps steward the Sustainable Agricultural Global Exchange, known as SAGE, we're big on acronyms here, uh, MESA, uh, which brings historically underserved beginning farmers, gardeners, and learners together to foster community and career pathways in agroecology. Lauren, I'm so grateful you were able to meet with me after the fact. This is, it's so great to talk to you. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Christy, and thank you for that introduction. You know, um, now you may understand why it's always hard for me to talk about Mesa in like a 15 second uh, elevator pitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, just I, just I the words that. alone are lengthy. Yeah. yeah, and I get the newsletter and I feel like there's so much in every single issue of that newsletter that comes out is just a lot. You have a lot going on. So we're going to dive into that today. Uh, and you had your hands full during the Heirloom Expo, so I'm really grateful that we get this chance to talk outside of that. Um, and we're basically recording this in November, but this is going to air in March of 2024. So I don't know if that has any bearing on your answers, but uh, mm -hmm. we'll see as we go. Uh, so let's start with where you're located. And I think you mentioned that you are not a gardener, but where do you work pre predominantly uh, with farming? Well, so our our actual office is located in Berkeley, California, and um, and it's just an office. Uh, we are partnered with what we call host uh, partner farms and organizations across the United States, and then we are partnered with um, predominantly non governmental organizations who are working to promote sustainable agriculture in their communities in other countries. Uh, um, primarily in the global south. So our three main partner countries right now, our partner regions are um, uh, Africa, where our partner NGO is in Kenya, um, South Asia, where our partner NGO is in Sri Lanka, and then Latin America, where our partner NGO is in Peru. Wow, so you're covering a lot of territory over there, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. And what does Mesa's work entail? What are you trying to accomplish with this program? Well, um, our mission is to connect and cultivate sustainable farmers and food systems leaders around the world. And our primary, you know, our strategy for, for making that happen is mostly through experiential exchange programs. So uh, bringing together beginning and uh, experienced uh, agriculturists from, from different, uh, different cultures, different regions, and um, seeing the magic that happens when they get to spend a full season together. And I'm going to ask you a little bit more about that in a minute. But first, uh, I imagine it's a really big job to, well, it's a really big job to transform a global food system, especially the one here in the United States. So I was wondering if you could maybe share a little bit of an example of how the MESA program, the, the SAGE program, it's the SAGE program specifically, mm -hmm. how that works to help mend this broken system. Yeah, well, as I'm sure you know, Christy, 
like the uh, the average age of an American farmer, I think, is approaching sixty. Um, so there's a lot of need for more skilled farmers to be coming along and and hopefully bucking the trend of um you know industrialized farming i think you know we've all become a lot more aware and and supportive of local more sustainable food systems and um and so there's a lot of there is actually a lot of interest, you know, youth interest in in those types of getting into that kind of agriculture, whether it's whether you call it regenerative agriculture or agroecology, um, sustainable. Um, don't so much say organic anymore because that comes along. That's yeah. now tied up with certification, and you know, most days I feel like we are, you know, the people in our network in our community i feel like we're we're little minnows swimming against you know the yeah. sharks yeah and and i don't have any illusions that certainly mesa is going to transform the the global food system however um so many of our uh we call them stewards the the exchange participants who come from other countries and 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 train in the U.S. So many of them have gone on to start their own community-based organizations, non-governmental organizations, um, transfer their family farms from being reliant on, um, you know, agrochemicals to becoming more sustainable. Have started CSAs um, in their, you know, if they're if they're located like near a um, you know, near a city. Um, that's a model that is very has been really um, fascinating for our for our stewards when they're here to try to replicate when they when they've returned home. Um, some to great success, and so you know it's just those little those little ripples um, that feels I, good. That feels really great, and conversely, like some of our host partners here in the U.S., you know the 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 best host partners we could hope for are the ones who say, you know, I, I thought I was going to be the trainer, but I was really the trainee. Ooh. I learned so much from my steward. And, um, and that's, you know, where we really are promoting a learn and learn, you know, a learn and share model of, of, of training and cultural exchange. Um, and uh, yeah. And then the other thing that we have, done and I really feel like Mesa maybe really spearheaded this back in like 2013 we we had um curriculum that we would put together in a you know literally paper handbook for our international stewards and we would give them uh, you know readings about um sustainable food systems and agroecology principles and we converted that into an online curriculum and we made that available then for anyone um, and we created an online community at the time, called it um, uh, the uh, Farm Centered Learning Network for Social Change. And we hosted this platform that was available for students, you know, online learners everywhere that was very successful for several years. Um, I really think it was one of the first of its kind, like online um, curriculum that was, you know, not connected to a university. Um, that was open to all, and it really brought our our international stewards together with like American online learners. Um, so I'm a real believer in like yes, providing the 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 theoretical, but combining that with the practical. Yeah. And you know, you can't really learn to be a farmer just by studying books. You books, have to get right. out there and get <laughs> get your hands dirty. So right. And speaking of which, so a lot of our listeners have heard of woofing, which is mm -hmm. worldwide work on a world uh, organic farm. Actually, they've they've, they've, they've changed they've actually changed what the acronym means. Yes. It's it's worldwide opportunities on organic farms. That's right. Thank you. I keep mm -hmm. messing up the WW part because I'm like worldwide is one word. But it's not anyway. I digress. Yep. So your training programs are a lot like that, right? On an international level, right? 
it's funny people do compare us often times with woof i would say a big distinction and we're partnered with woof usa we're 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 actually facilitating some curriculum wonderful online agroecology curriculum for participants in their future farmers program um so they do you know a one month um hands on with a with a woof farm but they're also uh, doing an online course facilitated by by Mesa and our you know some of our really wonderful knowledgeable uh, instructors in agroecology. Um, the the difference between Mesa and Woof is really um, you know Woof is a membership network and so there's Woof are not actively necessarily matching you know Woof interns with Woof hosts. It's just kind of a big open open thing and and um where we're different is we provide a lot of oversight and matching and screening of candidates and full support for the international participants for the whole time that they're here we actually sponsor their visas oh wow um, that's that's a big deal provide provide health insurance provide a stipend woofers don't receive any money it's just a volunteer um you know it's a volunteer um situation where they're pr provided with room and board so you know they're but yes in that sense of young mostly young people wanting to go and have this experience with a farm um you know there are there are certain similarities for sure and yeah. organic farms sustainable farms yes and i know you mentioned that you have this or had at one time this online curriculum are there any other resources or advice that you'd have for folks who are just getting started with a small farm or food system connected business that you'd like to share oh gosh um <laughs> it's a huge question i know <laughs> um call your local farm advisor i think they're lonely no, <laughs> no there there are a lot of really i, I would say especially since we're, we're just wrapping up to uh, multi-year usda supported programs there are a lot of resources more and more and more for beginning farmers uh through the usda um you know i'm sure if you just go to usda.gov you'll you know be able to drill down from there but even our um you know, there are uh, resource conservation districts that are, you know, all over the country um, that have wonderful resources. So, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are really happy to help. Um, we have uh, even on our board an, an organic ag consultant. And, you know, if anybody wants to talk about how do I grow this particular thing, I'll put you in touch with Scott. Scott Murray, because, you know, he's just so knowledgeable and generous with his, with his knowledge. Um, but um, yeah, as part of, as part of our, uh, one of the programs we just wrapped up, we had a weekly ask a farmer uh, drop in for participants of our, of our programs. And unfortunately we, you know, the funding now has uh, run out for that, but we, you know, that's, there are a lot of resources out there just go talk to your you know at the farmers market and then ask where they're getting their information and they'll be able to put you in touch with some great resources yeah that makes sense the the whole i think i think what happens when people decide they're going to jump from being a gardener to a farmer you know whether mm -hmm. it's a small a small ordeal or a big one mm -hmm. that jump is really scary and terrifying and so the but the feeling that you have to do it on your own um, it's something I certainly worry of because mm -hmm. I forget that there's a whole community out there who's already done this and it makes mm -hmm. sense to talk to them. So, mm -hmm. uh, that, that makes a lot yeah, of sense. And, and local, far it, there are so many wonderful farmers conferences and workshops. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to say in every single community, but probably within a couple of uh, hours of drive from, from wherever you're located. So, um. Yeah, um, we actually have put together a really robust resource list um, for beginning farmers that we have not published yet. Um, it's not on our admittedly very outdated website that we're working on to. Um, but there, again, you know, I think if you just even start with USDA, um, mm -hmm. 
there will be a lot of resources. There's a lot more interest in supporting regenerative farming and small scale. Yeah, that is that is a, a new term. Well, it's not so new anymore, but it's something that is just starting to be regulated in a way. There is a certification mm -hmm. program for regenerative agriculture, which I was just reading about recently, and how how it is pretty stringent and tough to get right now. So I is think that right? that's a work in progress where farmers are giving feedback to the system that provides the certification and how, you know, how, what loops they have to, hoops they have to jump through in order to get that certification. Um, I've heard from a number of, of farms who have opted not to do that certification because it's too involved, uh, but yeah. they're doing the work and they're growing that way. They just can't get through the, the process. Um, that's, so, that's, that's disappointing to hear. Yeah. Are you familiar with the certified naturally grown movement too? No, certainly. Yeah. Tell me about that. Well, I wish I could tell you more other than I know there's an, uh, an organization that is also, yeah, trending called Certified Naturally Grown. Um, that is a, a certification process where I believe, you know, the whole purpose is to make that a less daunting, you know, not have to go through the same levels of bureaucracy and expense as folks who are going like the organic certification route. Yeah. So because it I is very expensive regenerative um, uh, certification. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's relatively new on the, on the, you know, in the, the pathway to those labels. Um, and I know there are a lot of small farms out there who can't afford organic certification, but they're growing, you know, they're using all the methods and they're doing all the things It just can't mm -hmm make the the investment which is hard yeah and i think that's where if they if those farms are very local and have you know the their community um primarily purchasing what they're growing then those you know it's 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 i'm not going to say easy but you can educate your community members on your growing practices you know if you're right. at, at you're at the farmer's market and it's pesticide free, it's pesticide free. You don't need a label for that. And you, you build that trust. Right. Um, but once you want to get into the broader market, then yeah, I think, I think bureaucracy can rear its ugly head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, it is tip time. Do you have a favorite tip you'd like to share with the garden nerd audience? Um, yes. So Mesa is partnered with um, an outfit called Garden Savvy. They're based on the East Coast and they have this wonderful garden planner called Hortosketch. And um, if uh, it, it's, it's just a really cool online tool that allows you to plan out your garden and tell you what things uh, grow nicely together and uh, climate zones and um, makes recommendations and there's just a, a huge amount of information available for people who subscribe. It's an annual subscription. I think it's $34.99. Um, and anyone who uses our link to um, our friends at, at um, Garden Savvy, uh, they'll donate 50% of your annual subscription to Mesa. We are a nonprofit, oh. small organization. I'll make sure that the link is in the show notes as well. Ah, sure. Thank you. And I'm so that's gonna... my tip. If you're thinking about, you know, making a garden, whether it's just a, 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 a garden, you know, a planter box or your entire yard, check out, check out Garden Savvy and Hoarder Sketch. And I will just say that I also have been sort of consulting <laughs> with the Horta sketch with with uh John at uh Garden Savvy to give them a little bit more information and feedback on how what uh the southern and warm winter climates garden and our timing for their calendar so their plan is to upgrade their planning calendar to include warm winter garden climates so that right. they those uh those calendar items will be accurate for those of us who garden in these places. So I'm looking forward to seeing those improvements and then I'll be bragging about it too cuz uh, <laughs> uh I would do, I think it is probably the best um garden planning software I've seen in a long time which is Oh that's great. saying a lot. So uh we'll be yeah go ahead. Oh sorry, could I add one more tip? 
Yes, go ahead. You have another tip for, for your for your listeners. If you if you know of a a, a really great community farm that is um, you know focused on sustainability and and um, and good uh, practices, uh, tell them about Mesa because I can tell you they are often um, their number one complaint is. Um, unreliable labor and and too expensive labor and our program is very uh, affordable um option if if that you know if that farm is really willing to you know make the commitment to to training a new generation of of farmers and wants to share what they got to share with someone from a completely different country that is a really good tip i think that's going to help a lot of people out there who are struggling to find good solid help it's good help is hard to find let's be yes let's be honest thank you so much lauren for that expert tip those both expert tips uh and for being a guest on the gardener tip of the week podcast where can people find you online oh um mesaprogram.org m-e-s-a program.org Again, our website is somewhat outdated, but you can get the basics there and uh, please join our, uh, sign up for our mailing list. We do send out a monthly newsletter featuring a lot of our participants and and their, you know, amazing um, experiences and and triumphs. So great. And are you on any social media? Uh, We are, we have a, we have a great YouTube channel. Um, we are on, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, Mesa, um, at Mesa program, as well as let's see, blah, 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 blah. we're no longer on X, um, <laughs> and Instagram. Yes. Okay. Got it. Excellent. Well, garden nerds, uh, you'll find links to Mesa's website and social media feeds this week at gardennerd.com. We'll also share their online classes where you can dive into learning more about sustainable agroecology and all their other stuff. That's it for this week. Subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcast or wherever you listen. Visit us for tons of free gardening information at GardenNerd.com. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support all the free stuff we do here at Garden Nerd. You'll find us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter under GardenNerd1, on Facebook as GardenNerd.com, and of course, our GardenNerd YouTube channel. Happy gardening!